Hello there everyone, I'm the Almighty Zentaco, and today we're going to be learning how to do some NPC dialogue uh, with Click Team Fusion 2.5. So this one's actually uh, maybe a little more complicated than, than some of our other tutorials, but I think we're all going to do just fine. So <clears throat> first thing first, let's take a look at what it's going to look like. I'm using the art from uh, my last tutorial. So you can walk up to this guy and you can press space and talk to him. So as you see, the, it has this typewriter text effect where the, the text uh, grows in length every so often, has a sound effect, and the dude you're talking to um, animates. Also there is progressive dialogue, so he says something different every time. So let's go ahead and take a look at how this is done. Okay, so the first thing we're going to need to do is create a new object and that is going to be a string object. We'll put that right here. Um, we're gonna do a couple things to the string. If you click over here on the text options, we can change the font and the size. I'm gonna make it 16 uh, and bold. I'm gonna keep this to Homa, just cause why not? Uh, keep in mind too, the size of it horizontally affects how uh, wide the, the string will populate. So if you have a very narrow, then you're only going to have a few letters per line. But if you make it really wide, you can maybe even fit your entire string on one line. So keep that in mind. Okay. <clears throat> so let's take a look at how the string works real quick. So let's go ahead and set up a start of frame event. And we're going to go to the string and we're going to click on change alterable string. The alterable string essentially is the text that is being displayed on the string. So we're just going to type something in like, hello, hello. Now if we run this, the string says, hello, hello. So that, generally speaking, that is how strings work. Um, they also have something called paragraphs, which is what we are going to be using. If you go over, here it is right here, on the uh, settings of the string, you can see that there's paragraphs. So we're going to need a few paragraphs. And these paragraphs are numbered, and so we can essentially change the string to set it to be any of these paragraphs. So let's write some dialogue for our little red pear-shaped fellow. Hello, blue man with the skull face. How are you today? <clears throat> so that's the first thing he'll say. The next thing he can say is maybe, I enjoy eating tacos with spaghetti and hot sauce. So just write some stuff in here just so we can uh, test out different things you can say. Whoop doop de loop schnoop. And lastly, what is the square root of a turkey sandwich? I really want to know. All right. <clears throat> So we gotta do a couple things here uh, to make sure this works. Let's click on the guy. Any dude we're gonna have who's gonna have a conversation uh, who has text, we're gonna need to give him an alterable value and we will call this convo, uh, not state, con convo count. And we're gonna leave that at zero. What this is gonna be is, um, this is gonna represent the number of the current uh, paragraph that we are going to be grabbing. But we need somewhere to store this temporarily. We're gonna use a global value. We're gonna make a global string and we're gonna call this text to display. <clears throat> All right, so let's go ahead and delete the starter frame. I don't need that. Okay, so now we need some way to actually converse with this guy. So we're gonna do that whenever the player is currently overlapping him. So overlapping another object, that object is this red pear shaped dude. And whenever we press a key, we're gonna make that be the space bar. So the keyboard upon pressing key space. When this happens, we're gonna set an internal flag on under our character, our player. We're gonna make that flag zero. And that is going to essentially, uh, we're gonna flag on and off the state in which we are having the text type out. So whenever it's on, that means we're typing out the text. Whenever it's off, we're no longer typing out the text. We also need to grab 
the current conversation value and stick it in the global string here. Now this doesn't have to be a global string. This is long, it's just a string. You can put this, save this in any object, but we're gonna use a global string for this just because it's easy. So set global string and that string was text display. And we're gonna grab the, uh, under the string object, we're going to grab text of a paragraph and that paragraph value is going to be the value of convo count. So <clears throat> that means when we click on this, it's gonna, uh, when we press space and we're overlapping this guy, it's gonna set the internal flag zero on. It's going to grab the string of the current conversation. We also then want to progress the conversation. So we're gonna have the alterable value uh, of convo count. We're gonna add one to that. Okay, <clears throat> so now we need to actually type out our text. So we're gonna do that this way. We're gonna say, is the alterable flag on and that was zero and we don't want the text to type out all at once we want some delay so we're going to also insert in every event and we're going to make this every 10 milliseconds so what we're going to do is we're going to set the alterable string whoops i said display we need to change the alterable string so this is going to change what's displayed <clears throat> and we're going to change that to um, we're going to type in something called left dollar sign. So what left dollar sign does is it gets a string and then you put in a number and it will display that many characters from the left. So here's how it works. So we would say left dollar sign parentheses and then our string could be something like hello and then we put a comma and then the number like four. And what that would do is it would write four letters from the left from hello. So it'd be H-E-L-L. -L. So it would spell hell. So the string we want to grab is the global string text display, which if you remember, it currently has the value of the conversation that we want to have. Now we're going to try something else new here. It's called length. This will get you the length of a string. And we want to get the current length of the alterable string here, which will currently be zero. And we're going to add one to that. So what this is going to do is every time this loops, uh, it's going to increase the text by one, and the text that's going to display is the text that was saved to that uh, global global string. So hopefully that makes sense. We also wanted to play a sound effect when this happens. So let's go to samples, play sample, and I have a typewriter sound effect right here. I'm going to plug that in. All right, so let's test this out. Um, okay, so we got a mistake here. Uh, we need to do a start a frame event. I forgot to do this, so insert a new event, start a frame, and what we want to do is essentially clear the alterable string, so we're just going to change it to a null string, so just uh, two quotation marks. That should fix it. Let's try it again. Okay, as you see it does work, but the sound keeps triggering, and the reason that's happening is because this uh, type effect happens as long as the flag is on in every 10 seconds. So we need to turn it off. And we're gonna do that by finding out if the current alterable string's length is equal to the, the length of the string we were trying to type, meaning it is finished. So we will say, um, we're gonna go to the special object and we are going to compare two general values. The first value is gonna be length, that's L-E-N, and we're gonna get the length of the global string text to display and we want to see if that equals the length of the alterable string so if that is true then we know that we are done conversing and we can go ahead and turn this flag off so we will go to uh, flags set off flag zero <clears throat> Okay, so now we have another problem. You see how this, when we uh, progressed the conversation, it went straight to the next line without typing out. And that's because the current length of the alterable string is already pretty big. We need to nullify that 
So um, whenever we instigate a conversation, we want to make sure we refresh that string to, to null. So go to the string and change the multiple string to nothing. Let's make sure the order is proper. We'll put that at the top. All right, so now we should be able to converse and have more than one conversation with the text effects still typing out. There we go, works just fine. Um, I also want to add an animation effect to this guy though, so he's animating when we're talking to him. We're gonna do that whenever, um, by referencing the flag, because we know when the flag is on that the conversation is happening, when it's off it's not. So let's go ahead and set those states up now. We will ask if the flag is on, that flag was zero. We're also going to ask if the flag is off. That flag is also zero. OK, so when the flag is on, we're having a conversation with this guy. So we want to say, change his animation. We're going to go to animation, change, animation sequence. We're going to make that walking. That's the, uh, the talking animation I have. Let's go ahead and look at it real quick, though. I want to show you how it works. So the stop the animation is just mostly the same frame and one of the frames his eyes are closed and that loops so that makes him blink. Uh, and the walking one is five different frames of his mouth moving around. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna have this be set to a random animation frame while this is running. So we're gonna go to animation, change animation frame and we're gonna make that random five because that's how many frames we have. Whoops, I did four. <clears throat> okay, so um, we got the random five. The last thing we need to do then is to set the animation back to idle whenever it's off. So we'll go to animation, animation sequence to stopped. And since we were forcing the animation frame, we need to also go to animation and restore animation frame. Otherwise, it'll be stuck. All right, let's test it out. Okay, as you see, that was way too fast, so we also need to limit this. Let's add a every event here, and we'll make this every 10 milliseconds. Let's try that again. Okay, so this works perfectly fine. Okay, so there's one more thing I would like to add, um, and that is going to be turning the text invisible whenever it's been on the screen for too long. So we're gonna do that this way. We are going to we are going to create another alterable value under our player. We're gonna call it timer, no, we're going to call it text display timer. All right, so whenever the flag, no, whenever the length of the string is the same as the length of the string we want to display, meaning it has finished typing it out, then we are going to add one to the text display timer. And when the text display timer is greater than a certain value, we'll say greater or equal to 100, then we are going to make the string invisible. So now we're going to need to be able to make it visible again and refresh that timer. So that's going to be whenever we start the conversation. So we will say visibility, make the string reappear and we need to change that value of that counter back to zero, so set the text display timer back to zero. Let's test this out. Okay. So that does exactly what we want. That that works perfectly fine. So 
Uh, I hope you guys found this useful. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. Um, also, if you need some help, uh, feel free to hop into my Discord channel. There are lots of people there willing to help you out. The, uh, the link will be in the description. So as always, guys, thank you for watching. I hope you found this video educational. And until next time, have a good one.